Green keying yourself is pretty cool. You can just put yourself at any place you like, but how can we get that crisp, clean green key? Well, let me show you how it's done right inside Premiere Pro. Hey folks, Jordy here for Cinecom.net and welcome to the Creative Videography channel. Today we're back again in Premiere Pro and we're taking a look at how to do a green key. Now before I start, I do have to mention that the basis of a good green key is your recording itself. You need to have set up a good green screen, proper lighting and make a good recording. And then you can pull off that crisp and clean green key in post-production. If your recording wasn't good, you're going to have a hard time in post as well. Now for those of you who would like to find out more on how to set up a green screen, you can just click here in the card on the upper right to go to another tutorial video that we've created on how to set up a green screen in your garage with some basic equipment on a budget. But I'm going to assume that you've already got your shots if you're watching this tutorial. So let's just get started and see how we do this inside Premiere Pro. Now, for those of you who are wondering why not do this inside After Effects, you know, it just has tons of more possibilities. Well, we do mainly all of our green keys inside Premiere Pro, and the reason for it is, well, we just get great results, as you can see right here. And also, and that's something that After Effects just can't do, we can play this back in real time, as you can see. I haven't rendered this at all. This right here is, by the way, a 4K clip. We've done color corrections onto it, the green key, and we're watching two layers at the same time. So that is pretty awesome. The performance we're getting in Premiere is astonishing. So let's get started. I'm going to delete all of these clips right here and drag in the green key clip back to Premiere Pro. And yes, I want to keep the existing settings because this is actually a 4K clip, like I said before, that we're dragging inside a 1080p sequence. So I'm going to scale this down so that it matches the size of the sequence. And to start with, before we're going to add the ultra key effect, which, which, is, uh, which is the effect we're going to work with, I'm first going to go to the opacity right here and take my pen tool. Because what I want to do is mask out the subject. Because as you can see on the edges right here, we've got this little shadow. And that's because, well, my lighting wasn't set so properly. But we don't really need that because all of the presentations happen in the middle. So just cut out your subject like that. Now, after you've created your uh, mask, you can always reposition the points. Just take them and reposition them elsewhere as you can see. Now make sure that you also play back your clip because you don't want any actions to go outside that mask. So right here you can see that it's very close. I'm just going to make this a little bit bigger like that and everything looks good further. So now we are ready to get that ultra key effect. Head over to your effects and search for the ultra key and drag that onto your clip. Head over to the options and the first thing, which is pretty obvious, we're going to take the color picker and just select the green. And there we go, we've already got a key, but it's not so clean yet, and we will see that better once we're going to set the output from the final result to the alpha channel. And the alpha channel will actually show you the mask of what is being keyed out. So everything in white will stay there and everything black is gone. Now, as you can see here, definitely on the bottom, we still have a lot of whites, that means it's not keyed out properly. So that's why we're going to dive into the settings right here, the matte generation to uh, clean that up. Now these controls right here, you can see it somehow as doing a color correction, but then for keying, so a keying correction. Just like with color correction, we can work on the shadows, the highlights, the, the exposure and such. We also here have those options, you know, the transparency, you can see it somehow as the brightness or the exposure, but you also have the options here to work on the highlights, the shadows, the pedestal, which is the blacks. So let's start with that transparency setting. What you basically want to do is increase this as much as possible. Now, if you're going to increase this too much, you will see what happens here. It's going to like bite into the subject. And that's not what you want. You want to keep this all white. Also here, the clapper. So I'm going to decrease this again, just until we don't see anything anymore in the mask. So that is good. Now, the reason that we have to increase the transparency as much as possible is because of a little spill that we have to deal with later. So you're going to see later why that is. Next, we're going to work on the shadows and you want to bring that down to remove the stuff in the background, but also the shadows come back in my jeans right here, which is pretty dark, and also the clapper itself. So again, we're going to do the exact same thing as with the transparency. We want to decrease that as much as possible, just until we're not biting into the subject. So that's something like this. Now, while you're changing these options, make sure to also check your movement, the whole shot now and then, because uh, sometimes it could be that your keying looks well, 
at this time. But when you're going back, when your subject is taking a different position, that it doesn't look that well anymore. So double check that now and then. And then finally, we're going to work on the pedestal. And uh, this is going to make sure that we can bring down uh, the whites here in the background. You can see these as the blacks and the shadows kind of lay on top of that. So this is really like the last value that we have to go through. There we go. Don't increase your values too much because that will do an aggressive key and that will just leave some nasty things on your edges. So let's set this back now, the output here on the composite, which is the final result. And a couple more things that we have to deal with. If we're going to set this to 100% here, you will see here these edges. We've got this little line around the subject. So we have to remove that. Also here you can see in my cheek that I've got some green cast. Also that we can all remove with this effect. But before we do so, let's take a very quick break to thank the sponsor of this video. Stanza, an easy to use video transition pack from Rocket Stock comes with over 200 unique effects. You just need to drag and drop the pre-rendered transitions into your timeline in Premiere Pro or Final Cut X. It's a perfect option for video editors of all experience levels. For free samples or to see this pack in action, check out the link in the description below or head over to rocketstock.com to find out more. And welcome back guys. Let's continue with the matte cleanup, which is the next option in the ultra key effect. And with this option right here, we can choke into the matte and remove that little line. Now, as I was telling before, the transparency Try to have that at the maximum as possible. If you're going to lower this too much, you'll see that that line only gets larger. So that's the reason why we've increased that transparency to reduce that line as much as possible from the beginning so that we don't have to choke too much because you know, choking isn't that good to do. You are actually biting into your subject. So uh, be careful using the choke effect. You can do this a little bit. Also for the hair, sometimes it's just way too harsh here. Then you can play with the soften as well a little bit to get kind of a gradient here in the hairs. But don't over exaggerate the soften because we don't want it to be that visible, of course. A good green key has kind of harder edges and not those very feathered edges like you sometimes see, which just really doesn't look well. And then finally, the last option that we have to go through is the spill suppression. And this here is going to make sure that we can remove this little green here from my cheek. Sometimes you also see that in the arms of a subject when they are turned against the green screen. Now, the only thing we basically have to do in here is increase the desaturation. Again, increase that as much as possible right before we turn black and right. So decrease that back a little bit right before, and that will take care of the green here in my cheek. And that's basically it. So let's put this back on fit so that we can see the whole shot looking pretty awesome. Now, when your subject is moving a lot, like here where I'm turning myself around, we sometimes run into a problem where the edges get a little bit more visible because of the motion blur. You can see that a little bit here with the clapper. It seems like it's done pretty good. I was hoping that the art effects would show itself a bit more, but that just means that the recording was done good, so uh, I shouldn't complain here. Okay, we got a little line right here in my arm. Let me just put that back on 100% so we can see that a bit more. That's because of the motion blur. It's something that we can't really avoid. There are some tricks in the recording to just increase your shutter speed, um, but you will always have motion blur when someone is dancing around or turning himself around to do a silly move with a film clapper. But anyways, you can kind of fix that, those edges in uh, moving stuff with the Luma setting right here. So that's it. Head back to the fit mode and from the project panel here, I'm going to drag in my background behind it to make it the same size as well. Looking pretty awesome, isn't it? I'm still looking kind of flat, kind of dull here. So I'm also going to color grade myself. Pretty important here. I'm just going to go to color. Is that you do your color corrections afterwards and not before the ultra key effect. So uh, do anything you want in here to make yourself look appealing. I'm just going to increase the saturation, the exposure a bit. This doesn't really matter. It really depends on your taste. Again, the most important thing is just to make sure that the volumetric color is after the ultra key. So that's it for this tutorial video, which was, by the way, inspired by you guys to do. You can head over to cinecom.net slash vote. You can also find a link to it in the description below. That will bring you to a page where you can actually vote for a new tutorial that we should create next. Or you can also propose a new ID and make other people vote on that ID. Everyone can vote once every 24 hours. And every time we make one of the tutorials that was suggested by you, then we just cross that off. Thank you so much for watching, and as always, stay creative.